Hey, hello, and welcome back to Good Knit Kisses. <laughs> I'm your host, Kristen. I started to say Good Knit Chrises. <laughs> Hey everyone, hello and how are you? It is now Monday. I had a big weekend myself, went to the state fair and uh, man, we had a late morning. So uh, anyway, I am like, I'm a couple minutes shy of being on on time. So I'm so sorry. <laughs> welcome to the live and welcome to replay. If you're catching me on replay, most people do. I'm so glad that you joined me. Uh, we are going to be working on week five of the stitch along on the loom along side. The clue came out for the latest stitch along clue and you can find that on the Bernat Blanket Stitch Along page or my website uh, or obviously my YouTube. And so the clue, the best place to get it is go to the blog and it will give you all the low down on the hoe down. <laughs> so that's from one text into another. Um, it gave you all the information you need <laughs> for the big party of the stitch along. So catch um, the Good Knit Kisses uh, website that we've got linked at the top and we'll probably put it in the comments below. Uh, if you're on Facebook, it'll be in the description if you're on YouTube. And so um, I will, um, we, well, I'm sorry, Joanne has worked on it and she worked it on on it over the weekend and got the notes up and so um, she had she actually worked on connecting it so I'm going to be going over her notes so if I'm a little slow it's because I'm working straight from her notes <laughs> Um, it's similar to connecting from uh, on loom knitting it's similar to connecting like on uh, the tin stitch. Okay, so it's it's similar ish, and we'll be connecting two panels at a time. Now, if you have a stitch along, what is happening? Uh, um, you are connecting your panels this week. Um, there's more happening next week, but this week you're connecting your panels. And so the first thing you do is go watch the video, and if you're a loom knitter, watch until minute like 11, and that will get you to speed for a third of your blanket. And then the rest of it, you'll come back to this video. So I want to make sure that you get that middle section done first, and then um, you will do. Um, you'll be adding on the strip. So we're putting our blanket together, and then we're going to finish it out next week. So um, yeah, I had fun at the fair. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Um, hey, Robin. Hey, Gail. Good morning. Hey, Joanne. Hey, Laura and Tillar and Tanya and Elizabeth. Taylor, Taylor, Taylor. Did I say it funny? Uh, hey, Katie and Tara. Hi, and hey, Lexi. I'm so glad you guys have joined me today. Um, we're a little light on people, probably because I didn't start on time. So I'm hoping Facebook gave some people the notifications. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Hey, Alicia, seeing you jump on. Uh, so I have got um, a couple of um, pieces here. Now, I don't have my whole blanket in front of me because my whole blanket has already been finished, as, as you can imagine. So um, I have my... Um, I have a sample here that I had worked on, and then I'll be attaching it to um, one of my other little samples here to show you how to connect those. Um, I just want to give everybody an opportunity to hop on. Um, also, let me just talk for a moment while we're waiting. The giveaway, the giveaway where you can win balls of yarn, yes. <laughs> so if you have been joining us for needles and knitting on uh, the, the stitch along, or you're joining us on the loom and stitching along, it's all knitting. Okay, so if you are a knitter, loom or needle, you are eligible for that giveaway. You're also eligible for crochet, but you got to go over the crochet crowd for that. <laughs> so if you're stitching along and you complete even one clue, you are eligible. So even if you're like, Kristen, I'm so slow, I'll barely get a clue done. Well, get that one clue done. <laughs> so what you do is you take a picture of it all like out, the one clue. And um, it's those two panels. And uh, yeah, so take a picture of that. You submit it on our page. Um, all the details for the giveaway uh, are on the website, on goodknitkisses.com. And you can click on that giveaway and um, read all the rules. And then there's a little bitty thing. It almost looks like an ad, but it's not. But it's 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 for entering the giveaway. And you sign in. And then each week when you, uh, there's one more clue next week. So um, one more opportunity to um, place that um that uh, clue in there, um, you have until, what is it, the 29th, 28th or 29th, Joanne, uh, to enter, and then we will launch it that Monday, 
uh, in, uh, we'll talk about it in a Monday announcement. So if you're uh, not familiar yet and you're just catching me for the first time, I am live on our Facebook page. That's facebook.com slash goodknitkisses YouTube. It's all written out. It's kind of longish. Um, if you go to that on Monday mornings, 9 a.m. Central Standard Time, I'm here and I'll be making the announcement. Yay! And there'll also be something else going on too. So, you know, what, as soon as I hear the names, don't go away because there's something else coming. So, um, anyway, yeah, I want you to know that, um, that that is happening. Hey, Melissa, I see you jumped on. Thank you for the link, Joanne. She's put that, um, the link for the blog for today and for the stitch along for the Clue 5. And she's put the link for the giveaway. So those are all in the um, notes here in the, uh, the comments below. And Joanne's confirming, yes, the 29th is the last day to enter. So the 30th, which should be a Monday, is the day that we um, we announce it. So you have until like basically midnight my time that Sunday night before. So anyway, I'm so glad that you're here. Um, all right. Uh, what else do I need to tell you? There are, um, boy, I know we haven't had Thanksgiving yet, but we all want the Christmas season to come, don't we? <laughs> Things are coming. Get prepared. Get prepared. And after this big stitch along, this big blanket stitch along, I've got some other little goodies that'll be quick knits for you. So that's your tip. I can't tell you everything. Uh, however, I will say, if you are not part of the Yarnspirations um, newsletter, you're going to want to sign up today because tomorrow uh, an email will go out and you're going to want to have that newsletter. So, um, yeah. Yay. <laughs> so, um, be sure and do that. And then this Friday you'll see a little bit more and I have to zip, zip it and, uh, and not say anything else. So <laughs> I, you know, I, I love teasing y'all, but sometimes I, I, I hate it because <laughs> I really want to say. So uh, give me some love if uh, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> so hit, hit your heart button. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, okay. Sorry, my thing's shaking. I'm trying to fix my, um, I have like a little cord and sometimes it gets in the way in these broadcasts. Thanks to the teaser, Elizabeth says. You're welcome, hunt. <laughs> All right. Um, I am, I'm actually, I had to confess, I, I am kind of nervous about connecting this panel live because honestly, I was so tired. I really slept in. So I, this will be the fourth, first time. Boy, I can't talk. That's promising. This will be the first time I connect it like this. <laughs> but thank you for the notes, Joanne. <laughs> She'll probably be like, Kristen, you'll be fine. Stop it. <laughs> hey, Loretta. Good morning. Hi, Charlotte. Okay, so if you're connecting your panels, again, if you're just joining me, you leave us with cliffhangers, Elizabeth says. Yeah, I do. <laughs> Don't jump off just yet. <laughs> Wait till I knit you a net. <laughs> Not a net full of jelly. <laughs> There's no skippy peanut butter at the end. And if you're old enough to remember and you're on here, I love you and applaud you. Um, anyway, <laughs> Joanne's like, Kristen, you'll be fine. Stop it. <laughs> Chris, Melissa says, Kristen, you need a holiday, not just sleep in. I do need a holiday. However, I would knit during the holiday. <laughs> um, <coughs> excuse me. I didn't even get my coffee. I don't even have it right here. So hopefully I'm good because I don't think I'm having a cough drop near my, nearby me either. Okay. So again, if you're just joining me, go to the clue video and go and watch all the way until, um, I believe it's 11 minutes. I believe it's 11 minutes. I think I talk about how to connect the middle part. So, I don't know if I can show you. Hang on. All right, let me show you some. So, you're going to connect. I'm trying to be really careful, y'all, about what I show you. Okay. So you're going to connect this middle panel here and there's not going to be a seam. So this is going to become a checkerboard. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, I just coughed right into the microphone. And then this is the back. So there is no seam. So this is, this is a seam between the two. There's no ridge. Yay. There's no ridge. So here's that. And so you're connecting these panels into a checkerboard. So that middle section gets done, but you have to watch the clue video for that. And then we're going to connect it 
um, we're going to connect, um, this is the opposite, but like here, um, let me fold it. So while the knitting one is going to look like this, okay, um, it'll be flipped on yours. So, um, this side will go on the opposite side because this, this screen is not reversed. It, it mirror, it flips it for you. Um, anyway, this one will be on this side. So put on the opposite. Anyway, got to go to the video to see it, but we're going to connect those two panels and then on and the other side, the other two panels. So, but you got to, to connect the other part, um, you got to see it on that video. Okay. I have an easy way to do it. Yes, Melissa. I, well, I, I'm not going to claim it. Joanne is the one who um, did it. So I didn't, I, I'm sure I could have come up with it and I would have come up with it, but she did it the easiest, best way for us. So um, she is the girl. Okay. So if you have questions and you see her chat with you on the stitch along page, she's the girl to talk to. Okay. The woman, I say girl, even though it's a woman. Okay. Y'all just, I love it. <laughs> so I say that word. Okay. Um, let me get my, I've got all kinds of bits in the way I'm going to use instead of my, just so you, you can see it better. Um, instead of using gray is my contrast a, yeah, go Joanne. That's what we say. Everybody give her a little round of applause or a, 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 a heart. Um, okay. So I'm going to use for my contrast a purple, even though that's not what it was because I want you to see, um, it easier because my contrast a is gray. And honey, you don't want to see that on camera right now. Um, Joanne says it's okay if you want to make me younger. I'm good with that. <laughs> yeah, we're all good with that, right? <laughs> okay. Um, man, I wish I had something to drink right next to me. Mm, my throat's really, really dry. Um, okay. All right. Let me get my stuff together. Sorry. Okay. Y'all can flip and see my madness. All right. Hold on. Okay, let's get the lights on, and let's get this moved over. Oh gosh, it's in front of my chair. Oh, thank you. That would happen, wouldn't it? This is my day. Oh, you need something better than that. That's not going to work. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm still getting over this junk. There we go. All right. So here is my loom. Whatever loom that you've been working on for your um, for your stitch along. And then you've got one of your panels here. Okay. And then uh, so I've got this, this panel here, which is um, week um, four. Let me make sure I've got it lined. I'm going to look at my other one as a cheat here. So I've got it on the correct side. Okay. So, this is my week um, four, and then in the middle will be my, um, I'll have a week one, and then a week two, and then one, week one again, and then those panels are all going to get seamed together, and so I'll have like this, we'll just call it the middle checkerboard, okay? So, this represents my middle checkerboard, and then um, on the other side, on the other side over here, would be my, um, you know, if I had the sample right next to me, it'd be very helpful. Sorry. I'm sorry, y'all. Okay, well, anyway, this is your week three. Okay, so week three would be on this side. That, that's a pick, that's from my um, last sample. I'm, I'm not sure what happened to it. It's like the kids came in here and walked off with it. Um, I've got to redo that. Um, I've got to redo that, uh, piece for week, um, week three though. Um, working it back up because I, there's a mistake. So I pointed out on my video and I realized I messed up. So I'm going to have to, um, that one where if you drop the stitch, you have to go back up. I, I did something on it. It'll look okay as an okay fix, but I, I, it's missing an element. Okay. Gail, I can't, I, uh, I, uh, where I am, I can't, I can't get anything. So it, it'll be fine. Okay. So you're going to take your panels and they're going to be coming up from the middle in here. Okay. And so you're going to be pulling and picking up this in stitches and, and y'all, I, this is, these are really live stitches right here. Um, okay. 
So this will be the right side of them. Imagine all my tails are woven in, okay? And then I will be putting these together. So this is the right side, this is the front side. And we will be picking up these purl stitches that you see. You see these purl stitches here? And then these, whoops, these little purl stitches. So you'll be picking them up and putting them on your loom like that. Okay, and that's how we start connecting them. Um, <clears throat> just to confirm with Joanne, um, we're gonna have to put uh, one of these stitches though. Um, I would put these beginning two on here, but she may have just used one um, of the cast on edge on first when we pick up our first stitch so that our ends are connected. So you'll wanna connect those ends first. Hi Dawn, I see you. I've gotta get that loom to you too, honey. Okay, um, let me get my yarn. This is my um, contrast yarn. This is supposed to be contrast A. Okay, making my slip knot. It doesn't matter where on your loom you, you start. Um, if it's helpful, you can put it um, right where the um, little notch is. So you know where you began. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna put it with, oh, and I need to get my, um, let me get my iPad out. I'm gonna get it to the side here. I gotta punch in my code, it, it went away. Okay, so here's the website. This is Clue 5, you scroll all the way down to the bottom. This is the one, um, this is week three, and this is week four, and then you're gonna have this checkerboard panel in the middle I'm going to scroll all the way down. You're skipping this part where you don't need all these needles. Okay, so the loomers are skipping all the needle part. See, where you connect stuff together and have a three needle bind off. You don't need that. There's a video on here, so watch the first 11 minutes for the loom knitters. Do the checkerboard panel. And then we're going to go down to the bottom here. Nah, nah, nah. Okay, where it says, there it is, notes for loom knitters. Uh, okay, so you read all this. And to know that we don't pick up all 96 stitches that you need um, along the side. So normally you'd be picking up stitches along the side. We're actually going to be picking them up from the edges at the same time instead of picking them up from the side. So you don't have to have a giant loom. You just have to have a loom that has at least um, four pegs on it. Okay. <clears throat> and scroll down here. Join clues one and two. And then um, join clues three and four of the checkerboard panel. So that's what we're doing now. Um, it's a unique one. So ours will look a little different in the join. Okay, so you need to know the purl stitch and the slip stitch, which is just skipping a peg. And those are the abbreviations. Uh, join one when working this join. Peg three refers to the last peg in the row. You, um, so we'll get to what you actually do, but um, join one is you pick up the purl bump from the edge of the panel to be joined and place it on the empty peg next to the three peg. And then you wrap and knit it uh, over. Just like if you're doing the 10 stitch or if you've seen my uh, five stitch, um, ten, um, the five stitch blanket on the zippy loom. So if you want to go look in that, at that video and review it, that's fine. But when you work that la that peg, then you move it over, and then you're going to be, um, so you move it over to the peg three that you skip, and then you purl both loops together on peg three. Now on the zippy one, you're not purling it, you knit it, but, but that's how we're doing it for this one. Okay, so using contrast A, you're gonna cast on three stitches, and then that um, first row, you purl it, and then you knit it, and then you join it. So, um, oh, sorry, you also need to know the knit stitch or the U stitch, so we gotta add that and into the notes. Um, and she just put that in the, um, the comments there. So, uh, she was reminding us, I'm glad I looked down and saw that. Thank you. <laughs> I was thinking there's something missing from those notes. Okay. So I'm going to refer to this off to the side because that's kind of irritating to look at on the screen. It keeps jumping around because the autofocus. Okay. <clears throat> I'm getting all ready. I'm going to set out my panels here. <coughs> okay. I'm going to cast on using this first stitch here. Okay. And I'm going to double E wrap cast on. Let me get that stitch 
up and over. I'm going to double E wrap this one. I'm just casting on until this first peg here. Okay. All right, it is ready for me. And then now row one, I'm going to purl peg one. So I put my yarn in the front. I purl that peg. I always, I always hate doing the first one like this because it just, it's just finicky when you first cast on. Okay, there we go, purl peg one. And then we need to knit, so that's a U-wrap, knit peg two. Okay, and then while we're gonna join peg one, so what I do is I skip peg three and I come over to peg, well, the holding peg. Okay, I'm gonna go back up to my notes on this other end here. So we pick up the bump. In this case, to join the first part, I'm going to grab that first bump from the cast on edge, okay? And then um, we're gonna wrap and knit over this peg. So I bring my yarn to the back of peg three and go to the front of the holding peg. And then I'm gonna work that stitch just like that. Okay, that's step one. I'm sorry, that's step two. So we picked up that the thing that's step one. Step two is wrap and knit it over. Step three is move it onto peg three. Okay, so we moved it onto peg three. And so now we have two loops, one, two, on peg three. And then we're gonna purl both loops on step four. We're gonna purl both of them together. So go through both of them, pull up the loop, and lift the old off and put the new one on. And now we have just connected this panel over here. And then now row two, we're gonna work our way back and we slip the first one because technically we just worked it, but um, we're slipping it. And so we, sorry, get that tail out of there. Then we want to knit this next one, knit. And then we're going to join this next one. So this becomes our new peg three in the row. So where we skip it, right? So now we need to get our next panel and grab the cast on from here, which is where I have my slip knot here. I'm gonna put that right on here. Now, you may have never done this before because you have done joining only on one edge. So we're joining two at the same time. This is rather than sewing. You wanna sew that middle section though. It'll, it, it'll be so much nicer and you won't have a ridge or anything like that. Okay, so we're going behind that peg three and we're gonna work this holding peg. All right, and now we pick it up and we move it and put it onto peg three. Tighten that up and then come in the front and then we're going to purl these two together. Purl. Okay, and then now this one we knit. We always knit this center peg. So knit. And then now we're back over here to this side. Same thing. Um, so we have um, actually Joe I think it's just a repeat of row two. Yeah, it's a repeat of row two throughout to the end of the panels. So row two is now slip one, knit one, join one. Slip one, knit one, join one. So I knit one and now I join one. So I'm coming behind the peg three. We're gonna place the next one. Here is that purl stitch that's poking out. So we're gonna put that on there like that. And then we're gonna go along and we're going to knit it. And we're gonna move it. Do, 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 do. And we come to the front and we purl it together. Okay, and then we knit it. And then we pick up. We come over this other side. We grab our purl bump. We put it on the holding peg. We knit it. We move it. Roll them together. 
knit the center, pick up, skip behind that peg, knit it, pick it up, purl it together, knit the center, pick up, place it on the holding, skip behind that peg, knit it, pick it up, knit them together. So we pick it up, placed it. So it's a little awkward start. Uh, yeah, but once you get it, uh, it starts going fast. Joanne's saying that I'm repeating her, but that's actually what I was just about to say. I mean, she and I sometimes are one brain. I know her twins on here, but maybe we're triplets, honey. <laughs> so uh, pick up this next one. Go behind the peg, knit it, pick it up and place it, and work the two together. Okay, that's it. So uh, I'm going to work a little bit more, and um, I want to get some more of this on here so we can see it. So if you guys don't mind, see, and I almost did it. See, did y'all see what I did? I didn't knit it first. Come around here, and you'll know you knit it because your yarn should be on this side. There you go. That was a little fixing mistakes part, but you gotta fix it as you go. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to tell you to, you may have to take it apart. If you don't know, if you miss something, you may have to go all the way back <clears throat> on this section here. And let me pull another one. And knit it. So it's good. It's better to see it in this lavender color rather than if I was doing it in the dark gray. Because dark gray is technically my contrast A. I suppose if you wanted the middle to be this uh, another color, this lighter color, or match another color, you probably would need to get another ball. Because you should have enough of contrast A um, to finish it out. Okay. Let's see if there's enough room. Okay, let's let's see. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm gonna try and see it from this side here. Do you see it? So this is our join here. Okay, so we've got our panel, our join, and our other panel. And that's that's how it that's what's happening. That's the, actually the width of what's happening on the needle one, and it's so much easier and the back side is a nice join too. There's no ridges. It's nice and smooth. I mean, it has a little bit of a join bump. I mean, just a little bit, but it's not a ridge. You may have just found your next solution to joining panels and um, you are so excited. So please say something in the comments below if this is exciting to you for future uses. Way to go, Joanne. <laughs> So it's as simple as that. It's just a stocking net front here. And so it has, um, it looks like almost like a garter edge here. And then the middle column is a knit column. Isn't that cool? Cool little join there. So that is it. Okay. So um, let me leave this here. And um, I am going to look at my comments real quick. Uh, let's see. Oh, Elizabeth says it does look easy. Can't wait to give it a try. Joanne says, Kristen, can you talk a little bit about marking your panel sections so the join is even? Oh, thank you. I totally missed that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I'm so sorry. I'm battling like cotton mouth right now. Um, okay. So when you're working, uh, and by the way, I talk about this extensively in the first, um, the first part of the video that I'm telling everybody for this checkerboard section that you need to do. And by the way, this is the wrong one for me to start on. Um, I'm just doing this for example on the loom knitting. So don't, please don't be confused. Um, this, this just represents the checkerboard section. So 
The checkerboard section, everything is divided into um, these six inch blocks, right? So it's sort of easily divided for you. But this other panel, the panels are gonna be on the left and then on the right of the checkerboard section. Those panels don't have any kind of division and you wanna make sure that you're um, pulling up and knitting evenly. So I would recommend um, laying these out next to each other. Once you have the checkerboard section, lay this section out and then wherever this division happens for that checkerboard, you know, where you see the color block come in. Okay, say this is my second color on here. Um, put a um, marker here, a removable stitch marker here, okay? And then here, let me show you these. I have these little guys, they look like little hair clips, but they've got little teeth on them. So you would come along and go, okay, this is where the next one is. So this is, this is how I can mark that. And then you would go along to the next color change and then you would mark it on here. And then know that you need to get about um, 12 stitches or so. You need to get an even join. So by the time you get to this color part here, if you notice that um, maybe this is like this, okay, maybe this particular one is way up here and this is down here, then you need to grab a few more stitches from this one at the same time. So when you pick up a panel like this, so when you're working along and you, you pick up, you're picking up panels, you're picking up panels, and you notice that this one's coming faster than this one, you can, um, ahead of time, grab two pickups at the same time and place them here and then work it and you can do what's called ease the fullness. You can you can shift your work so that these things line up together. Say these are my seams, uh, these are the, where the little uh, things are. I can grab two more and shift it down and so then that way it will be even by the time I get to the end because once I get to the end, you don't want this one panel to be completely wonky and be like, oh my gosh, I knitted my panel too short. Well, no you didn't, you just needed to ease the fullness as we say. Okay, does that make sense? Um, you guys, let me know. Um, let me see if I can, if I get any other questions. Um, uh, Robin, would a needle knitter be able to lose a, use a loom to join? Sure, why not? This is a needle, uh, I did this on the needles. So if you don't want those big long circular needles and you're like, hey, I got a loom, I can <laughs> I can do that. Yeah, you can. Um, yeah, there you go. Uh, Elizabeth says it looks easy. Joanne says, I know, I was excited to figure out a smooth way uh, to join the work. I like the knit column in the middle as a bit of a border. Uh, yeah, Alicia says this looks easier than the way that others are joining the panel. You don't have to worry about it um, even when sewing the panel. Yeah. Now, you do have to hand sew. You have to sew the checkerboard part. Um, I mean, if you like this column effect, I suppose you could join your checkerboard that way, but that's not really how it's intended. So, um, yeah, that is, uh, that is the deal, Pickle. That is the deal. So let me get this light off of here and I'm going to flip it and you'll see me. Ta-da! Uh, <laughs> so, oh my gosh, it is totally messed up. Um, there we go. <laughs> so anyway, um, I uh, hope that was helpful for you guys and you are enjoying the stitch along. Uh, it's so much better um, join uh, for, especially for loom knitters, because loom knitters have a particular problem because um, we have to have as many um, pegs uh, as we have to pick up, um, which you can do if your loom is big enough. But let's face it, who has a five eighths inch loom that's going to have, you know, the necessary 96 stitches? Um, if you are working on a Cindy Wood like oval loom and your and your loom is um, your loom is the right side, a size, um, you know, like an oval loom or something, then you probably are just fine if you've got one of those really big panel looms. Um, and you could pick them up on the side and you could try and imitate the one with the needles. And I don't want to tell you that you can't do anything because you can do anything you set your mind to. 
I'm just saying that you have to have a loom big enough. And so the way that Joanna did it, all you need is four. <laughs> so that's pretty great. So anyway, um, I hope that was helpful. Um, that's kind of a short broadcast, actually. Um, if anybody has any questions for me, let me know. If they are um, part of the Stitch Along, please place your, pan your, your panels. Put your questions on the Stitch Along page. If you will tag Good Knit Kisses, I have found that the hashtag doesn't work as easy. I like the hashtag. It's great. But if you could hit the at uh, just type at Good Knit Kisses and start typing it out. It should give you a way to like click on Good Knit Kisses to, and it, and it actually lets me find it faster. So if you have a specific question for me, um, and Joanne sees those tags too, um, so and she's been answering some questions. If you're a Luminator, um, Joanne's your girl as well. So it can come from either one of us. So I want you to know about that. Be sure and submit for the contest. Did you go for the giveaway? We're having three prizes. You can buy, you can knit an entire blanket of, uh, and the blanket um, yarn, the Burnett blanket yarn. And they're giving, we're giving it away three sets of it and, to make an entire blanket. Or you can, you'll get enough yarn for doing that or another project that you want to do. Um, also, um, my my blanket is actually a half size of the regular one. I did it um, all the, everything exactly identical. Instead of knitting to um, uh, fo um, 48 inches, I actually only knit to 24 inches. And then on the on the panels where you have eight blocks, I only did four blocks. And so mine's going to be more like a baby blanket size. And you'll get to see what that looks like. So if you said you know, oh, I'd like to do it, but maybe I want to change the size. Um, that's one way I did it. So it's very similar looking. So um, I'll be showing you that next week. So that's a little hint as to what mine looks like. And uh, and then you'll, you'll see the finishing and we'll see um, the technique that Joanne will show us how to do uh, for the final clue next week. I can't wait to see it. Please be sure and post your photos. If you love this join, please hit that love button or, or punch that like button and be sure and share it with your, your friends and uh, loom, loom neighbors <laughs> on Facebook. And uh, anyway, I hope you guys have a great day and uh, happy knitting. Uh, let's see. Oh, oh, you know what? I missed some questions. I saw that. Oh, I was about to let y'all go. Oh, thank you for the get well soon. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Oh, yeah, the clues, the message for Christian shows, sewing clues one and two are so easy. It's the smoothest seam ever done. Yeah, I love it. It's the Bickford, it's a Bickford seam, just so you know. Um, you wouldn't want to use it for shoulders in a sweater, okay? I will tell you that. Do not use the Bickford seam for shoulders in a sweater. Uh, but it's just fine for what we're doing. So anyway, thank you so much. We will see you next week or later on this week. Have a great day and happy knitting and crochet. Bye, everyone.